So I haven't really done a ranked list of minis yet, but today's set is probably gonna land near the top of my list of favorite small sets of monsters. The Mimic Colony by WizKids gives us mimic versions of various pieces of common furniture that your adventuring party is inevitably going to come across in their travels. And many thanks to WizKids for sending the pack to us to review. There is a whole section in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything about mimic colonies, which, as the name suggests, are groups of mimics who work together to create entire towns or camps or other structures to find strength in numbers. And the chapter includes perhaps one of my favorite pieces of D&D art ever, as you can see here. It's actually featured on the packaging of the mini pack, but it's a little hard to tell until you open it up. I mean, I would hang this painting in my house. Most of these mimics have a corresponding bit of scattered terrain in one of the various Warlock Tiles packs, so I will show you what they look like together. The idea would be to have a regular bit of furniture on your map, and then when someone gets too close, switch it out for the mimic. And the mimics here go together pretty well too, so you could easily have them all in the same room to really give your party a, a sticky situation to handle. But it is not super fun that all these minis use the standard mimic stat block. So over on our website, we are gonna give you a few extra actions that you can give to these guys to make them feel more unique. You can find them over at gallantgoblin.com. Also, the folks over at Minis Gallery clued me into a little indie shop that sells their own great mimic packs. I don't have any of them in person to share with you, but I will show you pics here at the end of the video. You're gonna love these. So, watch where you sit because we are entering the Mimic Colony. Before we jump in, the good folks over at Dungeons & Lasers are sponsoring today's video. They're launching a new Kickstarter called the World of Dooslayer. Dungeons & Lasers are known for providing really high quality unpainted minis and terrain for a fraction of the price that most other companies offer. You're looking here at a few of the ones that I put together very quickly this weekend. The Rosher's Golem, the Elder Krill, and Tour. They'll be featured in the new Kickstarter, which includes more than 400 models of different creatures, allies, enemies, NPCs, and new playable races. World of Dooslayer will also feature a bestiary and an entire campaign that will be, quote, morally complex. If you know me, you know that I want a campaign that offers players meaningful choices, and the World of Dooslayer promises just that. We'll talk more about it as we get closer to launch, but right now, go to the preview page, which we have linked in the eye in the corner of your screen up there, and the new hickey down below, and sign up to be notified when they launch. That's the World of Dooslayer from Dungeons & Lasers. So as I mentioned, there aren't a lot of mimic stat blocks in 5e right now. That's reflected here with the limited names these minis are given. Among the seven minis included in this set, there are only three names on the bases. Mimic, Juvenile Mimic, and Giant Mimic, mostly based on their base sizes. Number one is the classic treasure chest mimic here on a medium sized base and using the CR2 mimic stat block from the basic rules. Here you can see it next to one of the mini treasure chests that we've gotten from the Warlock tiles and 40 settings lines from WizKids over the years. Next up, we have another classic, the Barrel Mini. Mimics were first introduced into D&D in the original Monster Manual in 1977 by Gary Gygax. And fundamentally, they haven't changed that much. Originally, it was noted that they could perfectly mimic stone or wood, so they would take the shapes of things like chests and doors and stonework and barrels. And they excreted this powerful adhesive, which would trap anyone who touches them, so the Mimic could then bludgeon them to death with their pseudopods. Next up is the medium-sized Table Mimic. Just like all the D&D creatures, Mimics have evolved through the additions. They introduced the Metal Mimic in Creature Catalog 3 in 1985 that was able to imitate metal. In second edition, Mimics weren't natural creatures anymore, but created by wizards to protect their treasures. And a Greater Mimic was introduced in the Ruins of Undermountain 2 from 1994, and that could imitate an entire room or a small structure like a tomb. Next up, we have our small-sized Juvenile Mimic Mini, which uses the stat block of the same name from the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything book. And you can see the planter in that art piece from earlier, which we have in the sidebar for you here. Now, the Juvenile Mimic is technically tiny in size, but Whiskers doesn't make tiny monster minis, so it is upsized here to small. It's not exactly a threat with a CR of zero. We don't really have a regular planter mini, but a few smaller companies sell things that would work if you search through Etsy and similar marketplaces. Next up is another classic that I've used to good effect in my games, the Chair Mimic. Heck, I would take an entire warband of just different versions of a Chair Mimic. Maybe like a whole dining set. 
Tasha's mentions that mimic colonies are able to telepathically communicate with and negotiate with adventurers, and in some cases, might even offer a juvenile mimic as a peace gesture that the adventurers could then take on as a companion, which, come on, who wouldn't want a mimic pet? Next up, we have our first giant mimic, the Wardrobe. The stat block is in the Dragon Heist adventure of all places, but you can make it yourself by altering the original regular mimic stat block. Just make the size large, the hit point 75, give it a multi-attack with a two pseudopods and one bite, and then up its CR to three. We don't have a perfectly matching mini for this one that I can find. There's another type of wardrobe in the Halister's Lab set from Dungeon of the Bad Mage, and the aforementioned Tavern set has one that's probably the closest, but honestly, you don't really need a separate mini for this guy since when the door is closed, it looks like any other wardrobe, though it is on a base, which might be a giveaway to some of your more astute players. They have had minis in the past that could be removed from their bases, which would have been great here to fool our players, but either way, it is a trick that you'll probably be able to pull off on your gaming group at least once, maybe, and after that you're probably going to have to switch out the mini with something else. Finally, we have our large-sized giant mimic bearskin rug. It uses the giant mimic stat block. If there was ever a mini that called for a special action, it is a bearskin rug mimic. Now, I do want to hear if you ever introduced any interesting and unique mimics in your adventures. Please let me know down below. If you want the regular bearskin rug mini, you can find it in the Warlock Tiles Tavern set, which is a great one that goes for about 40 bucks. I'm going to show you those other amazing Mimic minis here in a moment, but first, our other sponsor today is Hitpoint Press and their upcoming Kickstarter for their Big Bads. This is going to be a great set of books to have on your game room shelf. The Big Book of Big Bads has 25 of the very best Big Bads from their collection, including six brand new ones, all ready to use for your one-shots or to expand your existing campaigns. They're some of the best 5e supplements out there with great art, fantastic writing, and really fun encounters. And getting hard copies of them has been tough in the past, so this is your moment. They also have a Creatures and Curios book with over a hundred monsters and magic items. Use our link down below to sign up to be notified when they launch on March 21st. Remember, using our links helps us stay on the air. Man, this is just a fun set. We could definitely have more, too. There was a dungeon door mimic in the Fangs and Talons set, but how about a regular tavern door? Or just take other items from the Warlock Tiles tavern set and turn them into mimics. The bed, the fireplace, the keg, the long table, even the little things like the cups and bottles and bread and food. We know that they can make tiny items, so why not tiny monsters, too? Other ones I'd love to see would be a rug, a weapon rack, a bar stool. I mean, honestly, the list is kind of endless. What would you like to see? If you are looking to get counterparts to these mimics, check out the tavern set and the Dungeon Dressing Warlock Tiles expansion pack, which has the treasure chest, the chair, barrel, round table, and a bunch of other really useful scatter terrain. You can pick it up for about 45 to 50 bucks. We'll have links to all that stuff down below. And don't forget to check out our website for those bonus mimic actions to make this mimic colony set just a little bit more fun to play. And that brings me to the excellent looking minis from Galadoria Games. They have full sets called Mimic Invasion kits that feature loads of mundane objects and their mimic counterparts. Kit 1 has a treasure chest, a barrel, a trap door, a magic hat, a grave, a book, a grandfather clock, and several others. You can get them unpainted for 48 bucks, hand painted for 125, or as digital SDL files you can print yourself for just 10 bucks. And they even have a custom storage box that you can add on, though it does seem to be sold out at the time of filming. Kit 2, which is also sold out right now, has a throne, a well, an anvil, a carpet, a minecart, a wardrobe, and more for the same prices. You can get a lot of the pairs individually if you don't want everything, or in little sets like four regular barrels and a mimic barrel for just $5.50. Now, I haven't seen these in person, but we did back their last Kickstarter, so we'll endeavor to show you those minis when they come in. We'll have a link to their mimic minis in the doohickey down below. If you have some Galadoria minis yourself, let us know how you like them in the comment section. The Mimic Colony appears to be launching this summer, June or July, for between 50 and 60 bucks. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to sign up for the World of Dewslayer Kickstarter from Dungeons and Lasers, launching in April, and for the Big Bads Kickstarter from Hitpoint Press, launching this month. 
who knows, maybe we'll have a Kickstarter or two of our own as well. We still have a full stock of Cobalt plushies and accessory packs, though we did a pretty small manufacturing run for our first pass this time. So if there's something you want, I would jump in soon before we start taking our existing stock to conventions this summer. Just visit cobaltplush.com to order. If you enjoyed this video, liking and subscribing helps us grow. My dream one day is to be able to hire an assistant to help me make more content, but we'll definitely need to grow to get that to happen. If you want to follow us on all our shenanigans, you can follow us on Friendspace, Linked Book, Snapster, and LimeWire. For now though, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.